SpaceX has made remarkable progress at Starbase in the past few weeks. They have conducted numerous tests on Starship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9. The water deluge system has been tested multiple times, and teams are completing retrofits and testing the orbital launch mount and related systems in preparation for the second orbital flight test of Starship, which could happen in the near future. A recently released Mariner hazard warning from the U.S. Coast Guard shows SpaceX is targeting no earlier than August 31 for the next Starship test flight. However, even with all the work being done and testing in progress, it is still highly unlikely that SpaceX will be able to launch Starship by then. SpaceX recently submitted its final mishap investigation report from the April launch to the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA is currently reviewing that report, and the agency did not provide a timeline for when its review would be complete. After reviewing the report, FAA will determine what fixes SpaceX needs to make in order to receive authorization to launch again. One of the issues to be fixed will be the rocket's self-destruction system, which took longer than expected to destroy the rocket after the test flight on April 20 went off course. SpaceX has conducted at least one test of a new self-destruct system, but it is unknown whether that test was successful or whether additional modifications are required. SpaceX and the FAA are also being sued by environmental groups to have the five-year launch license revoked, claiming that the agency failed to consider environmental harms from the Starship rocket program adequately. Neither SpaceX nor the FAA have provided updates regarding the ongoing dispute. Altogether, I think it is extremely doubtful that a launch would occur as soon as August 31st, however, a launch attempt by the end of 2023 is certainly quite possible. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section. Ship 25 and Booster 9 are undergoing their final round of preparations at the production facility. After the static fire test on August 6, SpaceX rolled the Booster 9 back to the launch site for further work and inspection. Technicians installed a new interstage ring on top of the booster to enable a new hot staging technique that SpaceX will use on the next test launch. The technique involves igniting the engines on the Starship's upper stage just before stage separation, while still attached to its booster stage. This will potentially increase the Starship's payload to orbit by 10%, as thrusting will not be paused during flight. The interstage ring installed on Booster 9 features customized truss work with openings for the Starship's exhaust to escape during hot staging. The ring also features a stainless steel dome inside, with a flatter head. The dome is designed to protect the top of the booster, which houses different electrical and mechanical components, from Starship exhaust during hot staging. A hot staging interstage test article installed between a ship aft section and a booster forward section recently underwent a series of structural tests at SpaceX's Massey's test site. During the test, conducted on a can crusher test rig, a set of 20 cables connected to hydraulic rams squeezed the interstage test article down to simulate the maximum forces that it would encounter during flight. The test was conducted to make sure the interstage could withstand the stresses of the actual flight. Although SpaceX did not officially announce the result of the structural test, the installation of an interstage ring on Booster 9 similar in design to the one tested at Massey's suggests that the test was successful and the ring section met all test requirements. Booster 9's partner, Ship 25, is parked at the Rocket Garden near the production site. Teams recently removed the lifting points on the nose cone of Ship 25 and began installing thermal protection tiles in its position. Work resumed at the orbital launch site after Booster 9 departed the area to prepare the launch pad and the launch mount for the second flight. After Booster 9's 33-engine static fire test, SpaceX announced that the test was aborted after 2.74 seconds instead of the planned five and that four Raptor engines shut down prematurely. Although the company did not reveal what caused the anomaly, there are rumors that the quick disconnect mechanisms designed to supply gases required for the startup of the outer 20 engines of the booster did not function as intended. Several booster quick disconnect purge tests were conducted in the past week, most likely to fix the issues and verify its performance. The quick disconnect tests increase the possibility that the rumors are true. Because the Booster 9 test did not go as expected, SpaceX will likely repeat the static fire in the coming days to ensure everything works properly before the flight test. Three new road closures for rocket testing have been posted from Monday to Wednesday next week. During a recent aerial flyover, RGV aerial photography spotted several cracks formed on the launch pad after the 33-engine static fire test. The fissures appeared outside the launch mount in the area covered with high-strength fondag concrete. Teams are already working to repair what appear to be minor cracks. It remains to be seen if Starship 25, Booster 9, and the launch pad can soon be ready to clear the way to a full stack, wet dress rehearsal, and then a second flight as early as August 31st.
The Starship nose cone believed to be part of the Starship human landing system crew cabin prototype was spotted at Starbase lately. The prototype consists of an elliptical stainless steel dome, or E-dome, crew cabin floor, and the old nose cone from Starship 22 without flaps. On the exterior, there is a human-sized door-shaped cutout. Several valves, electrical components, wiring, and plumbing can be seen on the bottom of the nose cone. It looks like the prototype is designed to test the Lunar Starship crew cabin and life support systems before building a Lunar Starship for NASA. When complete, the human landing system version of Starship will have pressurized crew cabins, airlocks, and elevators inside its nose cone. The payload bay segment will house the life support system, unpressurized cargo, and other essential components. The nose cone prototype was moved near the payload processing facility from the build site on August 12. A booster header tank, marked property of crew Starship, not scrap, was spotted at Starbase on August 15, confirming SpaceX has begun the construction of crew Starship prototypes for tests. The header tank was moved near the human landing system nose cone prototype. We will know the future of these test articles in the coming weeks. Recently, a Raptor engine was tested at SpaceX's McGregor test facility, with its nozzle angled slightly upward. The test, conducted on a horizontal test stand, lasted more than two minutes. SpaceX engineers were testing the maximum gimballing range set for engines to occur during the landing burn. Raptor engines need to be extremely gimballed after the landing burn, especially for Starships when it shift to vertical just before landing. From the next flight onwards, Starships and Super Heavy boosters will be electrically steered instead of using a complex web of plumbing and hydraulic power units. This will allow SpaceX to remove those power units and reduce the number of plumbing, saving over a ton of hydraulic mass on the launch vehicle. Pre-launch tests of vehicles that might be used on the third Starship flight and beyond are progressing at Starbase. Booster 10 and Starship 28 have recently been cryo-tested at the Massey's test site. Ship 28 is currently stationed at the Rocket Garden, and teams have begun installing Raptor engines in the ship. These Raptors appear to be a large improvement over the engines installed on previous ships and boosters. Meanwhile, Booster 10 was moved into the high bay on August 17 for engine installation. Static fire tests of Booster 10 and Ship 28 will begin once engine installation is complete. Starship 29 is already full height, and the ship was recently repositioned inside the Mega Bay for further assembly operations. The aft flaps of Ship 29 were moved into the high bay recently and will be installed on the ship very soon. Starship 30 was stacked onto its aft section Friday morning, completing the stacking process. Regarding ground infrastructure, SpaceX is progressing well with the expansion of the Star Factory. The production tent number two was completely disassembled last week, and the remaining two tents will follow soon, allowing the Star Factory to expand further. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. The Russian lunar lander, Luna 25, launched on August 10, successfully reached lunar orbit last Wednesday. According to Russian space agency Roscosmos, all Luna 25 systems are functioning normally and communication with the spacecraft is stable. The lander, weighing around 1,750 kilograms, is currently orbiting 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. On Monday, August 21st, the lander will perform the orbit maneuvers to attempt a soft landing north of the Bogoslowski crater on the lunar south pole. The lander is expected to stay on the lunar surface for a year and is tasked with collecting samples and analyzing soil with its eight science instruments. The two primary scientific objectives of the mission are to study the composition of the polar regolith and to study the plasma and dust components of the lunar polar exosphere. Luna 25 isn't the only spacecraft gearing up for a lunar landing, India's Chandrayaan-3 probe is also doing so. Chandrayaan-3, launched on July 14, entered lunar orbit on August 7. The spacecraft then performed a series of deorbiting maneuvers to lower its altitude to enter its final orbit about 100 kilometers from the lunar surface. On August 17, the lander, named Vikram, separated from the spacecraft's propulsion module and began its journey towards the lunar surface. After a series of de-boost maneuvers in the coming days, Vikram will finally descend on August 23 to touch down on the lunar south pole. Upon touchdown, the mission's rover, Pragyon, will roll off Vikram to explore the nearby region. As the equipment works on solar energy, the lander and the rover will gather scientific data on the surface for 14 Earth days, equal to one lunar day. Meanwhile, the propulsion module orbiting the Moon will be studying the spectral and polarimetric measurements of Earth from the lunar orbit with its spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth, or the SHAPE instrument. 
Please check out my previous videos to learn about the Luna 25 and Chandrayaan 3 landers in detail, including the onboard instruments and scientific objectives. Links are in the description. SpaceX launched its 99th dedicated Starlink mission past week. The mission, dubbed Starlink Group 610, lifted off atop a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Thursday, August 17, carrying 22 next-generation Starlink V2 mini-satellites. After stage separation, the first stage booster supporting the mission returned to Earth and touched down on the SpaceX drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. It was the 13th launch and landing for this booster, dubbed B1067. The rocket's upper stage continued carrying the 22 Starlink satellites toward low Earth orbit and eventually deployed them into a 525 km orbit, inclined 43 degrees to the equator. As of August 17, SpaceX has launched 4,962 Starlink satellites into space, of which 4,619 are currently orbiting the Earth. The next SpaceX mission, which will be the company's 100th dedicated Starlink mission, is scheduled for Tuesday, August 22. It will launch another batch of 21 Starlink V2 minis from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter has successfully completed its 55th flight on the Red Planet. NASA's Perseverance rover and the 1.8 kg Ingenuity helicopter landed together inside the Jezero crater in February 2021. The rover is hunting for signs of past Mars life and collecting samples for future return to Earth. Ingenuity is aiding those quests by doing scouting work for the Perseverance team. The helicopter had its 55th flight on August 12, in which it reached an altitude of 10 meters and traveled 264 meters in 143 seconds. NASA had initially designed Ingenuity to fly for a maximum duration of 90 seconds, covering distances of nearly 300 meters at a time, while maintaining an altitude of about 3 to 4.5 meters from the Martian surface. Since its first flight in April 2021, the tiny helicopter has completed 97.9 flying minutes, covering 12.5 kilometers, and reaching altitudes as high as 18 meters. This remarkable achievement showcases Ingenuity's immense capabilities and demonstrates aerial exploration is possible on Mars despite its thin atmosphere. It also opens new possibilities for the exploration of the planet and the potential use of aerial vehicles in future scientific endeavors. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.